Now we've got patients on ARVs. These are the guys you see all the time. When do we do what? Just for ART adverse event monitoring. So remember, if they newly initiate onto Nofavir, we do our creatinine at baseline, obviously, at three months and then at one year and then annually. So every time you do the viral load, you do your creatinine and obviously it's clinically indicated. If you've got anybody weirdly on any of your um, lipinavir ritonavirs, then we still do a cholesterol at three months, but we don't really see patients like that. If you use AZT, also very few patients you're going to start on AZT. They have to have a problem with both Nofavir and Abacavir then we do that full blood count and diff at one month and three months. Our CD4 monitoring, people don't always know this. So when you have a baseline CD4 that's under 12, under, under 200, then you're obviously going to put your patient on Bactrim, right? So now you need to make sure the CD4 count is over 200 so you can stop the Bactrim. So the the labs gatekeep the CD4s at six months. So you can't do a CD4 less than six months apart. So if you've done a CD4 at baseline, you can't do a CD4 at the three month visit, but we don't want to bring patients back, especially just for CD4s. So you would do your first CD4 check at the 12 month viral load check, if that makes sense. If the CD4 is still under 200 at the 12 month check, you're gonna check the CD4 every six months until the CD4 is over 200, and then you can stop your Bactrim. Um, if the viral load is over 1,000, then you're going to do that CD4 every six months until you see the viral load is over 1,000, because the CD4 might still be affected. If a new clinical condition arises, so suddenly the patient's got a new stage three or four condition, then just do your CD4 again. Um, and if somebody hasn't had a, say they've lost, they've missed treatment for three months, then you would also repeat your, your CD4 at that point. But it does mean that once the CD4 is over 200 and you've stopped your Bactrim, you're not going to repeat the CD4 count. Save us a bit of, bit of money. 10 to 20% of patients might not, the CD4 might never recover. And you might have patients who's always sitting at 100, 120, 130. They still do better on ARVs than that's not, that's not on ARVs. Um, and we do need to keep an eye on them. For TV screening, so obviously we're always going to do our symptom screen at every visit, but this is also in the guideline. I know we're not doing this. It's not in our habit. So actually every 12 months when we do the viral load review at 12 months, we're supposed to be doing a gene expert um, regardless of symptoms. It does open its own little can of worms because what do you do with asymptomatic positive gene experts? And the experts do not have clarity on that either. So it is its own challenge. So for viral load monitoring, so the simple principle is this. You start somebody on ARVs, or when you switch somebody on ARVs, or when you restart somebody on ARVs, you're going to do a viral load at three months, then at one year, and then annually. What makes the guideline confusing is they talk about dispensing cohorts. So um, three months is actually 12 weeks. Because remember, we're giving four weeks of treatment at a time. So what happens in the guidelines is they actually recommend, obviously, after three dispensing cycles, which we will also do. But then they recommend when you come back at four months for your viral load results to then give them that six months, um, if the viral load is LDL, to give them the six months of um, CCMDD. And so when they come back at 10 months, you can also do the viral load at 10 months. So a long explanation to say the official is three months and one year. But if you see the patient at 10 months, you can do the viral load at 10 months. The viral load is LDL, you can give them six months of, C of CCMDD. So the government is very much trying, the DOH is trying to create systems where patients come to the clinics as little as possible. So you don't want to now see them at 10 months and now bring them back in two months for their viral load because they have to have a viral load in one year. So try and coordinate your bloods as much as possible to reduce the amount of times that patients have to come to the clinics. When you do CCMDDs, Actually, in the guidelines, they talk about picking up three months of treatment at a time. I know the guys here quite often just gives you the two months option. But if you give people ARVs and you need to do, for example, a viral load in three months or you need to do a creatinine in three months, give them three months of treatment in one go. It's absolutely no point in them coming to queue for their one little bottle every single month or even every single two months. Um, so yeah, so once the viral load is less than 50, it's actually every 12 dispensing cycles. So that means if it's March of this year, it might very well fall in February of next year. It might, because remember 12, yeah, that's all logical. 
And the HIV Clinician Society, they do a viral load at three months and then they do one six monthly until the viral load is, is stable. I'm not quite sure what they mean by that, but they do it a bit more often. So this is out of the, um, uh, they have a guidelines and adherence guideline where there's a very strong um, drive towards this three monthly supplies of giving, of giving treatment. And especially if you're out in the CHCs, really try and get that. If you can give your patients three months, if there's no reason for the patient to come back within three months, um, give them the whole three months um, at a time. We have to talk a little bit about now what happens when your TLDs is over 50, because you're going to start seeing patients like that. Um, obviously, we have to do our ABCD. Do you guys all 